But what I want to talk with you about today is really the quality of the offer, because this is something that can be applied not just to email, but across all of the communications that you're having. Now, to help you understand the impact of the quality of the offer, I want to give you an example. I want you to imagine for a moment that you're wanting to buy a horse. And so you're looking through a horse magazine and you see two ads. And the first ad just says this, horse for sale, friendly horse, easy to ride, perfect for beginners, $2,000. And you continue to scroll through and then you come across the next ad. And ad number two says this, friendly horse, easy to ride, perfect for beginners. We'll bring the horse to you for a two week trial. We'll provide feed and a full two weeks of riding lessons. Pay $2,000 after the trial. If not, we'll come and get it and take it back. No strings attached. Which one of these horses are you much more likely to buy? Now the answer of course is number. Good morning. Good afternoon and good evening, folks. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Marketing Your Practice podcast, the podcast where I have the pleasure of simplifying the marketing and the mindset so you, the chiropractor, can increase your income, your impact, and your enjoyment in practice too. Of recent Inside of Community Influencer, we've been diving into the five elements of an effective email reactivation campaign. I'm going to explain these five components to you in a moment. I'm going to do a very deep dive into one of these as well. Now, if you're not aware of an exactly what an email reactivation campaign is, let me define that for you and let me talk to you about some of the benefits, okay? So an email reactivation campaign is a sequence of targeted emails over a defined period, and it's designed to re-engage patients who haven't visited the practice for a little while. So it focuses on reminding them of the value of the care that you deliver, and it gives them an offer, an invitation to come back into the practice as well. Now, there's several reasons that you should do this as well. It can be very effective at helping you to grow your practice. We had some community influencer members kick this off very quickly recently. One ended up with 16 reactivations. The other got $1,000 of business from a list of less than 100 people. So we don't have to have huge lists of people that we're sending this out to, but it can be a great way for us to give us a spike in growth. And this is all part of our plan to have a busier practice by Christmas as, as well. So here's four key benefits to an email reactivation campaign. The first is it allows us to maximize patient relationships, okay? These are people who've already raised their hand. They already know you, they like you, and they trust you. And I want to remind you here, for most chiropractors, they're doing a really great job. The reason the patients stop is not that they don't like you. It's not that they're not getting value. They just get busy and they get distracted. And so we need to remind them as well. The second thing is it's incredibly low cost and high yield, other than cost maybe of your email provider. And many now front desk programs actually have email built into them. It takes a little bit of time, which you can delegate off to your front desk staff, but there's very little cost involved in this, and it can bring in thousands of dollars immediately. It's predictable. This is something that we should be doing frequently, a minimum of twice a year, but probably quarterly as well. And it gives you an opportunity also, fourth and finally, here for you to educate and inform your patients as well. This is not just promotional. We can educate them, remind them of the benefits, and invite them back in as well. Now, as I mentioned beforehand, there are five elements of an effective email reactivation campaign. The first of those is the quality of the list. The second is the quality of the offer. And I'm going to talk about that a lot today. The third is the sequence. It's a sequence of emails. It's not just a one-off email. The fourth is the quality of the email. We've got to learn how to write a good email. And the fifth is, what do we do with the person when they come in as, as well, okay? When we get all five elements of that right, this can be an incredibly profitable thing for you to be doing regularly inside of your practice. But what I want to talk with you about today is really the quality of the offer, because this is something that can be applied not just to email, but across all of the communications that you're having as, as well. Now, to help you understand the impact of the quality of the offer, I want to give you an example. I want you to imagine for a moment that you're wanting to buy a horse. And so you're looking through a horse magazine and you see two ads or online wherever you go to buy horses as well. And the first ad just says this, horse for sale, friendly horse, easy to ride, perfect for beginners, $2,000. And you continue to scroll through and then you come across the next ad and ad number two says this, friendly horse, easy to ride, perfect for beginners. We'll bring the horse to you for a two week trial. We'll provide feed and a full two weeks of riding lessons. Experience riding it for yourself and see if it's a perfect fit. And if you love the horse, pay $2,000 after the trial. If not, we'll come and get it and take it back. No strings attached. Now imagine that you're wanting to buy a horse. Which one of these horses are you much more likely to buy? Now, the answer, of course, is number two, 
because the offer is much better. This is a great example of a magnetic offer, okay? Now, over the years, I've had several opportunities to sell everything from anything from cars to motorbikes to you name it. And instead of trying to blend in like all the other offers there, I try and create an irresistible offer. And for that reason, I've always had ease when it's come to selling these things as well. Now, don't be mistaken, though, for thinking that offers is only a thing for advertising. We're constantly making offers to our existing patients, our staff, our friends, our families every day. And if we want to get more yeses, then we need to understand how to make better offers, okay? Now, with regards to making offers to our patients, a well-crafted offer builds trust, it reduces resistance, and it encourages commitment to care. These are all qualities that help the person to get a better result, and these are all qualities that directly impact our practice success, our impact, our income, and our enjoyment. Now, I want you to not think of an offer as a sales tactic. I want you to think of an offer as an invitation. It's an invitation for a practice member to experience something, a staff member to experience something, a family member to experience something, or in our case, it's practice members to experience greater health. When you recommend a workshop, a follow-up visit, a prepayment of fees, you're not just promoting something, you're inviting patients to continue their journey towards health. Now, I'm going to take you through five elements of a compelling offer, okay? We're going to break down each of these. I'll give you some examples of what they look like, and I'll talk to you about maybe where we go wrong and some of the mistakes that we make with each of these, and then we'll wind all of this up and talk about how do we kind of implement this into our practice. The first one is one that you're probably really aware of, and this is pretty much where most chiropractors stop when they're making an offer, is it's a discount, okay? So why does a discount work? It works because it lowers the initial financial barrier. It makes it easier, particularly for new patients or returning patients to take that first step, particularly if they're hesitant about the cost of care or unsure about you, you haven't built up that trust, okay? And this is the case often for people in their early situation. So a discount can help them see the value of, of what's going on. Psychologically, discounts also create a sense of getting a deal, and we all like to get a deal. This increases the drive that somebody has to possibly reach out to you, okay? So some examples could be just an initial consultation discount, you know, get $30 off your first consultation, regularly priced at 90 bucks. This introductory offer just can make it a little bit easier for somebody to start as well, okay? It could be a referral discount that you have for your practice members, okay? Bring a friend or a family member in for their first consultation and receive $30 off your next visit, normally priced at $75. Again, one that many people do and I recommend that you do is that you have blocks of adjustments, prepay for a block of adjustments and normally valued at $840, save $70. So these are all examples of discounts, okay? They're easy for patients to understand. They can be encouraging for new patients or returning patients as well. They can be personalized, and they're valuable as, as well. Now, there are some common mistakes that chiropractors make when they're offering a discount, and believe it or not, one of them can be just offering too steep a discount. More than 50% off can or too frequent a discount can make our services feel less valuable and less credible, okay? And patients can tend to associate your services with lower quality or believe that they should only come in when there's a discount, okay? We can get known as the discount chiropractor in town. Now, this can be a problem if you don't have things set up properly for this, if your overheads are high, if you're not set to kind of, you know, that lower price sort of things there too, this can be a problem, okay? The second thing is not clearly communicating the original value, okay? So a discount feels compelling when we let people know. So for instance, if it's a $30 discount, $30 off what? $30 off $1,000, in which case it's not much of a big deal, but if it's $30 off $90, it's more compelling for them, okay? The other thing that we do as far as a mistake is we can make it complicated. So overly complex, complex, only available on specific days or requiring multiple steps. It confuses people, it can frustrate people, and when you confuse, you lose. So this means just keep your discount straightforward, really easy to redeem, state any conditions up front. This is something that many of your regulatory boards want you to do anyway as, as well, okay? So just be careful when you're doing a discount. Don't do it too often, don't do it too much. Make sure that it's clear and that you've actually communicated the original value there as well. Make sure that it's not 
complicated as, as well, okay? So use discounts strategically, okay? Make sure along with the discount, what you're doing is you're promoting the value of what they're getting, not just focusing on the dollar amount off, okay? So the value of what you're getting, not just out. Now, run discounts for limited times. When we do this, it creates a sense of urgency, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. But discounts, when done properly, can be a fantastic way to draw patients in without com compromising the perceived value of your care, okay? So let's go on to lever number two when we're wanting to create a really great offer, and that is bonuses, okay? Now, why does it work? Bonuses offer perceived value to an offer without discounting the main service. So many times, this is what we would use in our practice, because as I mentioned beforehand, we didn't want to be perceived as a discount chiropractor. So if I wanted to make a magnetic offer, we would add bonuses in instead. So they make patients feel like they're getting more for their money and they can help to distinguish your offer from those other chiropractors or other businesses around you, okay? Bonuses can also act as a preview to other services or tools or knowledge, and they can help to deepen a patient's commitment to their wellness journey, okay? So it could be something like a pillow fitting and a complimentary pillow. So, you know, book now and receive a complimentary pillow fitting and a custom pillow valued $100 or $110 or whatever it is as well there too. It could be a posture assessment exercise guide, you know, schedule an initial consultation, receive a free personalized posture assessment and exercise guide. It could be a 21-day online colic support course. So book your child's initial consultation and receive exclusive access to our 21-day colic relief and support program, $150 value at no extra cost. This online course provides daily tips, expert advice to prove uh, or to provide soothing techniques to help your child get through the challenges of colic. So these are all examples of bonuses that you could add with or without a discount, okay? So somebody's getting more value and at the same time, you don't have to lower your fees if you don't want to, okay? Now, some of the mistakes when chiropractors try and do this is they offer irrelevant or low value bonuses, okay? So that colic bonus I talked about before is only valuable to parents who have colic problems. The pillow fitting is going to be less value to the child that has colic. So we need to know how to match our bonus to the audience that we're seeing as well. Now, mistake number two is we can overload with too many bonuses. If we're offering too many bonuses, it can feel a bit canned or salesy. It can feel a bit overwhelming, like we're buying, you know, one set of steak knives, two set of steak knives, and we can decrease the perceived value, okay? The third mistake that I see is that we don't communicate the value of the bonus, okay? So we want to state it, okay? If I'm giving you a pillow fitting, why is this valuable? What's inside my colic course? What's inside the posture and the exercise? So we want to really communicate the value of it as we're going forwards too, okay? So bonuses are a fantastic thing for us to add in. Now, we used to add bonuses in when somebody prepaid for their adjustments. The re-exams, which were normally 120 for each re-exam, we would add those in at no charge. That was a bonus when you prepay them. So the scans and our posture photos, that was a bonus, okay? Let's move on to element number three, and that is scarcity, okay? So, so far we've talked about discount, we talked about bonuses, and now we're going to talk about scarcity. Why does scarcity make an offer more attractive and magnetic as well? Well, it taps into the psychological principle of fear of missing out or FOMO, okay, which increases the perceived value of an offer because it highlights its limited availability. And in nature, we tend to value those things that are limited in availability, okay? So when potential patients know that their offer is only available for a select few or a short period, they're more likely to act quickly. And this is what we want to get people doing, okay? So examples could be a limited availability for new patient consultations. So this month, we're offering a special rate on our initial consultation only for the first 15 patients, okay? There's scarcity with that. It could be an exclusive pediatric care offer. We're offering our colic support package, including the 21-day colic relief and support program to the first 10 families. So when we add this level of scarcity in there, it encourages people to take action immediately, okay? So common mistakes are, and this is one that really rubs me up the wrong way, is fake scarcity. You don't need to emphasize a limited nature of an offer if it's not really there, okay? When you do this, you're really going to erode trust and authority as well. So keep scarcity genuine by either setting a real limit or a number there too, or restricting it to certain conditions as, as, as well, okay? 
The second mistake is not clearly communicating the scarcity. If you don't emphasize the limited nature or if you're not really clear about it, then you can get yourself into trouble when somebody then tries to take you up on it and you then don't make it available to them. So, you know, only available to limited time offer. Just make sure that you lay out the details of your scarcity as you're going forwards as well, okay? Also, scarcity, another mistake I see is if you make your scarcity too strict or unrealistic, okay? So if it's just impossible for people to take up, if there's not enough time for them to do it, if the numbers are too short there as well, then what you end up doing is you end up, instead of building goodwill, you end up eroding goodwill and eroding trust as, as well. So we need to kind of keep that. So again, some quick tips here. Align the scarcity with demand. Think about um, combining scarcity with a reminder. So if this is an offer to your your list of people, make sure you give them a reminder beforehand. So if this is part of your email campaign where you're wanting people to come in by a certain date or a certain number of them, you could update them. Hey, there's only one spot left. You know, there was five, now there's only one. So make sure. And again, be transparent about the availability. So scarcity, here's the key. When used authentically, it helps patients to recognize the unique opportunity, okay? It helps to build value and it helps to get them taking action. It can be particularly powerful when combined with other elements like a discount to strengthen the peel as well, okay? Now, closely related to scarcity is the fourth element I want to talk about here and that is urgency, okay? But slightly different. Urgency motivates immediate action by adding a time constraint. This is the key difference with urgency here. Without a sense of urgency, potential patients may delay their decision and they put things off indefinitely, okay? So we've all seen the impact of urgency. When patients know they have a limited time to act, they're more likely to commit quickly rather than procrastinating, okay? So urgency is especially effective at nudging those people who are interested, but may need just a little push to go forwards, okay? So some examples could be this, could be a back-to-school health check, hurry, only one week left to book your back-to-school checkup for your kids at the discounted rate. Help them start the school off strong and in best health. It could be for the next 10 days only, book an initial consultation and save $50. Don't miss your chance to start better health at this special rate. Okay, so there's two really simple examples that we could give as well. Now, it could be some urgency for returning patients. You know, missed your regular adjustment there, book your next visit within the next seven days and enjoy a complimentary pillow or a stretching guide or a foam roller, whatever you want to add in there too, but we've added some urgency in there that they need to take action in the next seven days. Now, some mistakes that I see with this is that we can have too much urgency or we can have constant urgency. If everything is urgent all of the time there too, it feels insincere and less impactful. It's going to be a little bit like the boy that cried wolf there as well. So use urgency sparingly and strategically as well, okay? The second mistake, a bit like um, we talked about with scarcity before, is not specifying things, not being really clear about the deadline or the number of people. So vague timelines, limited time only or offer ends soon. This is not going to prompt immediate action. You want to let them know exactly when it finishes. You know, offer finishes September 30, only available to Friday. This sort of language helps to really clarify it as well, okay? Again, Urgency works really well with other elements, okay? Make sure that you have reminders along the way. So again, when we're setting out an email campaign or any type of campaign, we might have that campaign going for the next seven to 10 days. We want to make sure as we're going through that, that we're reminding people only five days left, three days left, only 24 hours left. So urgency helps your patients prioritize their health needs and make decisions quickly. And it should be an element that you use when you're making offers to your staff to get them to do things, your patients or new patients as well. The final one I want to talk about here is risk reversal. Okay, so why does it work? Risk reversal helps to reduce or eliminate the potential patient's hesitations by removing perceived risk of trying our services. Okay, now especially in healthcare, people may worry about spending money on something that they're unsure will benefit them. Okay, there's a low trust in healthcare post pandemic and sadly still in the chiropractic, there's even lower trust there. When we offer a guarantee, we demonstrate confidence in our services and we make it easier for potential patients to commit to an initial appointment. We want to, when possible, put the risk on us. Okay, So there's several different ways that we could do this. It could be just a simple satisfaction guarantee. We're confident in the quality of the care that we provide. If you're not satisfied with the initial visit, your next adjustment is on us. Or it could be a money-back guarantee, you know, a tender wellness workshop. Or, um, you know, in our case, our practice there, we actually had a 12-week 
guarantee there too. If any time in the first 12 weeks of your care, you're unhappy for any reason with your decision to start care here, we'll happily refund you. That's it. Okay. So now I've had that guarantee almost from the day that I started my practice. And in 24 years of doing it, I had one patient take me up on it. And I'm sure there are hundreds, if not thousands, that that guarantee that risk reversal really allowed them to commit to care. They had nothing to lose. If this didn't deliver what I promised it would deliver, they could get all of their money back as well. So some mistakes that I see chiropractors making with risk reversal is they're too vague. If the risk reversal isn't clearly stated, if it's written down in the fine print there as well, then it, you know, it's not going to give you the value. We need to kind of put it everywhere as, as well. Mistake number two is not offering a guarantee that's valuable enough. So, okay, we could offer a guarantee that says, come in for your initial consultation. If you don't like it, we'll give you your money back. That has some value to it. It's a good spot for you to start. But my situation said, you've got 12 weeks to try this out. If it doesn't deliver on what I says it said, said it will deliver, um, you've got nothing to lose there as well. So ensure the guarantee addresses what the patients are most concerned about the satisfaction, the quality of the care, those sorts of things there as well. So an effective risk reversal can be key into making an offer irresistible as well. So make it simple, make it clear, demonstrate confidence and highlight the guarantee as well. Now, I'm going to just pop in here as a bonus. There's five that I've gone over through here. A sixth one that I'll often talk about is testimonials or proof. Now, I purposely don't want to go into too much detail of it here because many of my listeners here are Aussies or Kiwis, Canadians. They're in places where they can't use proof. But just know that when we can have proof as a part of our offer, then it can really add to the magnetism of it. Social proof, some form of testimonial. If you can add that into your offers there too, then know that you'll get a better result with it. Now, when you're wanting to implement these five elements into your offer, think about first, what is the goal? What are you wanting to do? Is it attract new patients? Is it re-engage existing ones? Is it to promote a workshop? And depending on what the goal is, we want to craft our offer accordingly as well. Now, very rarely will an offer have every one of those components to it, okay? But it can feel a little bit salesy and a bit pushy and sleazy if we have all of those. But as a general rule, we certainly want to make sure that we hit two of them and three of them. So not every offer needs all five elements there too. We want to look at the ones that make the most sense for it, okay? At the very least, the ones that I encourage people to add in there is make sure that we have a discount as an easy one, add bonuses, and always make sure that you add some form of scarcity in there, okay? Scarcity and urgency, either or of those two to get people to take some actions. Now, what you need to do with this is you need to craft and test it, okay? See what works best for you. You know, you've got an offer that you send out to some inactive patients. If you're trying to invite people along to a workshop, if you're wanting to encourage your patients to prepay their adjustments, test things. When you added this in how many people took it up, okay? When you change the offer to add this bonus up, did more people too? The fourth thing that we need to do is making sure that we're promoting it consistently, okay? If we have an offer out there, we want it to make sure it's everywhere, social media, email, on our website, in our verbal communication with people. When we make sure that we add all these, clearly identify what the goal is of our offer, choose two to three components there, craft and test it and promote it consistently. This allows us to get the absolute best out of our offer as well. Okay, so let's sum all of this up, okay? As we've explored today, a compelling offer is more than just a promotional tool. It's a strategic invitation for patients to experience the life changing benefits of chiropractic care. Now, by incorporating those five elements, discount, bonus, scarcity, urgency, and risk reversal, and proof as a six bonus one there too, you're not only enhancing the appeal of your offer, but you build trust and you reduce any hesitation that patients might feel in order for them to want to get started with you. Okay, so think of each of these components as a way for you to lower the barrier for people starting care as well, okay? So these variable bonuses, urgency, scarcity, these sorts of things, they work together synergistically as well. Now, ultimately, a well-crafted offer serves as a powerful bridge that connects potential patients or past patients back to the care they need, allowing you to increase your impact, your income, and your enjoyment in practice also. If you're wanting to change more lives, if you're wanting to grow your practice, then you need to develop the skill of crafting irresistible and magnetic offers. And these five elements will really help you to do it. Folks, 
That's it for today's episode. As always, thanks for all that you do. Keep saving lives. Your community needs you to get really good at putting together compelling, magnetic, and irresistible offers. Until next time, have a great week. See you back here soon. Bye. If you've enjoyed listening to this podcast, you have to come and check out my Community Influencer Program. It's my monthly coaching program where we take all this material and I'll work with you to help you apply it, implement it, and systemize it. The Community Influencer Group Coaching Program is designed to help you increase your practice income, impact, and enjoyment. Join me over at angusPike.com forward slash join. That's angusPike.com forward slash join. I'd love to see you there.